The first part of this problem asks us to sketch the pattern of this person's motion. Let's say this is the person's starting point. First, they travel 3.1 kilometers north. So let's draw a first vector pointing upwards north. We'll call that vector A. Then they travel 2.4 kilometers west, so to the left. Make sure you draw it at least a little bit shorter because 2.4 is less than 3.1. And I'll call this vector B. And then finally, the person travels 5.2 kilometers south. So downwards for south. Again, 5.2 is more than 3.1, so make sure you have it kind of hanging low down here. And I'll call this third part vector C. And that's really it for our sketch. Notice that I've chosen to label each of the three parts of the motion as vectors. All of the directions here can be thought of as vectors because we're given both the magnitudes and the directions. So one way we could think about these vectors is in a standard coordinate system where to the right horizontally is the positive x-axis and upwards vertically is the positive y-axis, then vector A is equal to 3.1 kilometers with the j-hat unit vector because j is traditionally the unit vector for vertical motion or the y-axis. Vector B has a magnitude of negative 2.4, negative because it's pointing to the left in the negative x direction, this time with the i-hat unit vector, because i is typically the unit vector used for horizontal motion, or the x-axis. And vector c is negative 5.2 kilometers with the j-hat unit vector. Now part b of the problem asks us to find how far a bird would have to fly in a straight line from the same starting point to the same final point. So if the bird was flying from the starting point to the same final point we had before. So really what this problem is really asking us to find is the resultant vector of the three legs. So to find this resultant vector, we need, to, which I'm going to label R, we need to add the three legs together vectorially. So the vector R is equal to vector A plus vector B plus vector c, or rather 3.1 in the j direction plus negative 2.4 in the i direction plus negative 5.2 in the j direction. And note that we can't just add these numbers up all willy-nilly because we can really only just Using basic addition, we can really only add together the numbers that have the same unit vector attached to them. So we can say, because we've got 3.1 with the j-hat and 5.2 with the j-hat, we can add up those two numbers together, but we can't add the negative 2.4 to those numbers as well because it's a different unit vector. You can't add vector components very, you can't add vector components simply that way. Only the ones with the same component. So using basic arithmetic, we can only simplify this down to negative 2.4 kilometers, i-hat, plus, and then 3.1 minus 5.2 is negative 2.1, so plus negative 2.1 kilometers with the j-hat. If you want to actually find the magnitude of this vector, we're going to need to use the Pythagorean theorem. We're going to need to take the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So that's the square root of negative 2.4 kilometers squared plus negative 2.1 kilometers squared. And if we put that into a calculator, then we find a resultant vector with a magnitude of about 3.2 kilometers. So that is our answer to part B. Part C is asking us for the angle. 
So recall that when we have a vector broken into a horizontal or x component and a vertical or y component, then the angle of that vector is equal to the inverse tangent of the y component or the vertical component divided by the horizontal component. Or, rather, or another way of thinking of it is the component with the j unit vector, negative 2.1 kilometers, divided by the component with the i unit vector, or negative 2.4 kilometers. If you put this formula into a calculator and make sh making sure your calculator is in degree mode, we get an angle of 41 degrees. But you might notice that an angle of 41 degrees doesn't actually make much sense here, because if we think of a typical coordinate system, then an angle of 41 degrees is going to be pointed in the first quadrant. But if we look at our diagram of the actual direction that the bird's going to be flying in, we can see it's pointing down and to the left. So we would expect that the angle should actually be pointed in the third quadrant. So in order to get an angle that fits the situation better, we actually want to add 180 degrees to the angle we just found. This is because of the way the tangent function works. The tangent of any angle is equal to the tangent of that same angle plus 180 degrees. So our answer will be just as accurate, in fact more accurate in our case, if we add 180 degrees to the output we were given. So that's 221 degrees. So one way we could phrase our answer is that the bird flew at an angle of 221 degrees counterclockwise from east. Typically, though, when we describe angle directions, we usually describe them in terms of the smallest angle between the north and south axis. So it's usually considered more efficient to measure an angle as some number of degrees east of north, or some angle west of south. So that's what I want to try to do real quick in this case, which is some basic algebra. Not even algebra, basic arithmetic, really. Because 221 degrees represents this angle, this large angle, but we actually want to represent our answer using this smaller angle. We can get this somewhat smaller angle by taking 360 degrees, the total angle of the coordinate system, and then subtracting 221 degrees, which gives us 139 degrees. And then to just get that small angle, we can then subtract the 90 degrees from the fourth quadrant by taking 139 degrees minus 90 degrees, which gives us an angle of 49 degrees. So the bird flew at an angle of 49 degrees west from south. That is, in my opinion, the best way to represent the angle. And that is it for this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing as that'll help me out in making more videos like this. And if you have a request or a question, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out as best as I can. That's all for now and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye-bye.